Today I'm going to show you guys how to combine multiple images for exposure, removing elements, and finishing up your image. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're doing some really exciting things. We're taking our photo shoot from yesterday, and if you haven't checked it out, be sure to do so. We showed you the behind the scenes where we showed you working with the model, lighting, posing, everything you need in camera to make these images. And now we're going into Photoshop to show you how we're gonna combine multiple different images that we took, and we're gonna put them together to create our final image. It's gonna be really, really cool. Not incredibly complex, but th these are things that are gonna help you out quite a bit. Let's get into our image. So here are our images we're gonna be working with. Now to get everything together, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to File, down here to scripts and to load files into stack. I've already done this, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna go over here, we're in our load layers. I'm gonna hit browse, and then I'm just gonna shift click or hold down command or control and click on the layers that you wanna open. Let's go ahead and hit open. It'll load them up here. Then you just wanna hit okay. It takes a little bit, so I've already done that. But after you hit okay, you're gonna be getting something like this, where you have a few different images, depending on how many you choose, and they're all gonna be stacked together. The first thing I wanna do, you'll notice that if I turn some of these layers off and on, they're not exactly in the same place. Now we did have a camera on a tripod during this, so we wanted them to be relatively in the same place, but sometimes things happen. You move the camera a little bit to regain focus or whatever happens, you wanna make sure that you align these in Photoshop afterwards, and it's not really hard to do. So what we're gonna do, you can see they're not in alignment right now. We're gonna hold down shift and click on the three of them. Then we're gonna to go to edit and we're gonna to go to auto align layers. Okay, here we're gonna choose auto and I'm gonna hit okay. And it's basically just gonna do my job for me. I don't have to worry about anything, which is really nice. So let's check it out and make sure that it worked. So let's turn this layer off and on. And there you can see that in fact it did work. And here are our different layers. So let's just talk about these three layers. We had the camera on a tripod during the shoot, which meant that we could change the exposure and keep the same angles and everything like that. So that's what this layer is. This is just a little bit brighter exposure and we've got a little bit more detail, especially up here in those shadow areas. This layer doesn't have our softbox in it and we're talking about that uh, in just a second, but we wanna take a shot with the softbox in and then without the softbox. And then this layer is what we're gonna be using for the most part. You can see here's our strip box that we're actually using. And a lot of people you know, feel that all the lights that you use have to be totally off camera. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes you want that light to be nice and close to your subject, like what we have here, um, but it's gonna be in your photo. So unless you want it in your photo, you'll wanna make sure to keep the camera in the same place, move your light and take a different photograph, and then you can just replace that area of the photo. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna start off with this layer on the very bottom. Let's go ahead and make these two other layers invisible real quick. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and bring in this layer. You can see they're all aligned. It's gonna be really easy. We're gonna bring in this layer to be visible where this softbox is currently visible. And now just to help us out a little bit, I'm gonna create a curves adjustment layer on the top of everything and just bring the brightness up a bit. There we go. So we can just kind of see, get a better idea of what we're gonna be doing here. There we go. Let's make this layer visible. Now I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask. That's gonna make my layer mask black. There we are. And let's go ahead and choose a regular soft edge brush. And I'm gonna paint in white on my layer mask. So I'm painting in white on the layer mask. Keep in mind, this layer, is just a layer where there is no softbox. So by having a black layer, it just makes it invisible, and I'm painting white on this layer to now basically just make my softbox disappear. So this is a really, really big tip. So we can see there before. Let's look at this right now. I can't really see any softbox or anything like that. I, I can't see a whole lot, but I'm gonna make this curve adjustment layer visible, and now you could even bring this a little bit brighter. It's just gonna help you out quite a bit uh, to actually see some things. There we go. You can see now you can see the whole soft box there. So this is not going to stay visible. It's just to help me out. So I'm just going to paint white on my layer mask right there. And I know that I have in fact got gotten rid of my soft box. And let's go ahead and paint white down over here. So this is going to help out if you guys are doing this type of work where you're taking, uh, you know, an image, maybe you have your light stand in your frame. Um, it's going to help you out a lot because you don't have to worry about clone stamping. Notice I'm not clone stamping, I'm not doing anything. I'm not trying to fake this. I've just actually got two pictures, one with my light stand in it and one without. There we are. Now I do have a little bit of light stand there on the left and that's because the images weren't in the exact same place. I'm gonna crop that out because you could use a clone stamp tool or something like that anyway, but I'm gonna crop this photo anyway, so I, I don't really need that information there. Okay, now the next thing we we'll wanna do, let's just go ahead and delete that curves adjustment layer. 
is take a look at this layer where we can see we have quite a bit more information because this is a change of exposure. So we've opened up our shutter speed here about two stops. So this is uh, properly exposed and um, this is just a little bit overexposed. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the Alt or the Option key. And again, we're gonna put a black layer mask on there. So Alt or Option, click on your layer mask. And now we're gonna paint white right up here at the top. And what that's gonna do, I'm not, in this case, I'm not pushing the pixels. Notice how I'm not creating like a curves adjustment layer and then trying to make that brighter up there. The reason why this is much better is because a curves adjustment layer, you know, if you don't have a choice, is a great way. It can bring the pixels that you have and make them a bit brighter. However, if you just have an actual photograph that is lighter, it's gonna be much better because it's gonna be a lot less destructive. So there we have it, a lot more information up at the top. Let's hold down shift and we can see if I wanted more information there on the bottom, a little bit lighter, we could do that too, but I'm not necessarily concerned with that. So let's just zoom in and we can see here's the before and the after, just bringing in a lot more of that information. And um, it basically just looks like you have a better exposure uh, in your photo. So. Very cool already. What we're gonna do now, I'm gonna hit the crop tool and we're just gonna crop this in a little bit because I don't need these extra areas. And oftentimes when you are gonna be using the, um, the auto align tool, there we are, uh, your layers are gonna rotate a little bit, which means you're going to wind up having to crop those layers out, um, some of the information on there. You're gonna have to wind up cropping out. And we're just gonna push that down just a little bit and I'm gonna hit okay. Now I wanna make sure this delete cropped pixels in this case is not checked because I do not want, I hit enter by the way just then, I do not want to destroy all that information. If all that information goes away completely, you can never get it back. So here what we have, really didn't take too long. We have our base image, which already looks great. We have our overhead light, which is lighting the top of our subject here. And then our softbox, which is bringing in the rest of the light. Now we've brought, gotten rid of our softbox and we've added more information up there at the top. So we're gonna take this through just a couple more steps. So let's go ahead and shift click the two of those and hit Command G to group the two of those. There we are. We're gonna go just a couple more steps on this and then we're gonna be done, guys. I wanna go ahead and make it look like this light is really just kind of creating a beam right around our subject. To do so, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a curves adjustment layer and we're gonna bring down the brightness quite a bit on this. Okay. Now, I'm not necessarily concerned about how this looks right now. We can always tweak it. I'm gonna hit Command I on that as well. That's gonna inverse that. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a combination of two things. First, I wanna create an elliptical marquee. So we're gonna grab our elliptical marquee and I'm gonna select an area out that looks about like this. Now, when you guys are making these selections, if you hold down the space bar key, it's gonna allow you to move your selection as you're creating it, which is very nice. So I can create a selection here and just kind of move it down there. There we are. And I want something that kind of looks like a spotlight. So we've got that selected out and I think that's in a pretty good place there. Okay, if you wanna rotate it, which I think that I will, just so it'll make it look like a little bit more, um, a little bit more even, I'm gonna right click, go to transform selection and we're gonna rotate that around. So now it looks like it's in perspective a bit more. There we are. Now I'm gonna grab my polygonal lasso tool and holding down shift, which is gonna to add to my selection, I'm gonna go from this corner all the way up to my light. So shift, click up there, sorry, down there, come up here around my light and then come right down there as well. There we go. And we're gonna hit enter, which is going to complete our selection. So now we have a selection, uh, basically looks like a spotlight with a round edge there on the bottom. So on my layer mask, I'm gonna hit command I on this layer mask and that's gonna invert just that area on the layer mask. Let's deselect by hitting command D and you can see it's done its job, but it's the exact opposite of what we want. So we have to hit command I again. And now that's just our layer mask. So before our layer mask looked like this. Black on layer mask thing, makes things invisible, white makes things visible. So if we want the opposite of that, you hit Command I, which is inverse, and now the layer is not gonna be visible here and is gonna be visible on the outside. So now what we can do, I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust this because that's a little bit too dark for me. I think it's just, you know, I can't really see what's going on very well. So we're gonna adjust it just like that. Then we're gonna click on this layer and I'm gonna go to, sorry, the layer mask, we're gonna go to filter, blur, and down here to Gaussian blur. There we are, and I'm gonna choose a slightly larger Gaussian blur, and what that's gonna do is it's starting to make these edges look a little bit more natural. So you can see, like that looks like it was done in Photoshop, obviously, but as we get out a little bit more, it's starting to look more and more natural, which is very nice. So now we have this area, and it really does call some nice attention onto our subject. As a whole, I think this image is still a little bit dark, and I think we can do some cool things with color. So that's what we're gonna work on next, and then we're gonna be done. So I'm gonna grab my curves adjustment layer again, Actually, let's go with levels. 
I just like to show you both ways. They're basically the same thing. You can do everything uh, with both of them. Let's just bring this image brighter just a little bit. There we are. And now we're gonna play with some of our colors. So I'm gonna go down here to our blue channel and I'm gonna pull some blues into our shadows. Just like that. And then we're gonna pull some yellows into our highlights, which is gonna make it a little bit brighter as well, pulling your individual color layers up. Some red, it's a little too red now, so let's go into our green channel and try bringing that up a little bit as well. There we go. And here we can decide uh, how warm or cool we want the image to be. If I want it to be a little bit warmer, we'll just choose to add more or less red. If I want it to be a little bit warmer, I can choose less blue. A little bit cooler, we'll choose a little bit more blue. In this case, I think that that nice kind of a light, not too cool, but not too warm. Somewhere right about there, I think looks pretty good. So we're lightening everything up and color toning at the exact same time, which works very well in this case. Okay. That's about it, guys. If you wanted to go in here, you could just clone stamp out you know, some of these little pieces of glass and things like that. But for the majority of what I want to do with this image, that's about it. And you can see it didn't take an incredibly long time. So let's look at our before. There's our before. Um, not a whole lot of information up there in the shadows. And we have a softbox. And there are after we can see we have nice refined image and uh, it really didn't take too long. So. Guys, use these techniques in your photographs. If you need to get a light up and close personal with someone, that's not a big deal. Just make sure you take another photo with that light not there so you can then take it out with a layer mask. Make it nice and easy for you guys. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. Have an awesome weekend and I'll Florin you later. Bye everyone. Woo! Donezo! Yay! Yay! Photoshop, yay!